Okay, let's talk about phase changes and how enthalpy is affected by these phase changes. So looking at the figure on the left here, um, to the left of this line, we've got a three phase interaction chart that shows how solids have the lowest um, enthalpy and then liquids have a little bit higher and then gases have the highest. Um, but the chart's a little bit deceptive in total enthalpy for gases. We'll look at that in a second, but let's look at the different um, progressions here for definition purposes. A heat of fusion, um, which is the term for melting, going from solid to liquid, is an increase in enthalpy, as is the heat of vaporization, which is going from a liquid to a gas. It's an increase. So these are going to be positive values as well as going from solid directly to gas. We're gonna be a positive enthalpy value greater than zero for delta H for all of these processes. And again, solid to gas is called sublimation. All of the others, such as gas to solid, deposition, gas to liquid, condensation, liquid back to solid, uh, freezing or solidification, those are all gonna be negative delta H's because energy is released when, that, when those processes occur. Now, take a look here at the, it looks like if we just added the molar heat of fusion here to the molar heat of vaporization, we'd get the molar heat of sublim sublimation, but that's not exactly, that's a little bit deceptive in this chart, uh, which is good for learning our definitions, but we need to look at another figure um, to the right of this one here to know exactly the total value of the heat of sublimation. And so if we look at Phase, change in, phase changes of, a, of an experiment here where we are adding heat, because remember, um, delta H is equal to heat if we're at constant pressure. And so if we're looking at one mole of a substance here at one atmosphere, um, this chart would indicate that we are, at first on the left here, heating a solid. Okay, so we're in the solid phase here and we're heating it. See, the temperature is our independent variable here on the y-axis. And so as we're increasing temperature, we're heating and or adding heat. As we move to the right, we're increasing temperature. At a phase change where we melt here, we add an amount of heat to one mole of a substance that is equal to its molar heat of fusion, which I have indicated here. Remember, it's positive. Okay, and so then if we melt everything, what we're left with is a liquid that we then heat. And then after that, we have to vaporize that liquid. And so what we have here is the molar heat of vaporization that we've added to vaporize that one mole of substance. So that width of that line, the total amount of heat we've added is the molar heat of vaporization in a picture form, okay? And then to the right of this point, we are now in the gas phase and we're going to heat the gas. So all phase changes and then subsequent heating, the thermodynamics can be tracked with this type of a plot where we go from solid to liquid to gas and we melt the solid with the molar heat of fusion. We heat the liquid MC delta T for every time we're heating a substance, mass times a specific heat times the change in temperature. And then we vaporize and then we heat the gas as well. So we can keep track of what's going on for any substance. Now, if we look, put that in an equation form, this is what it looks like. So our solid here that we've got at first, the MC delta T for the solid, um, that specific heat and change in temperature value is going to be different, but the mass is going to remain the same throughout. But then notice, um, for heat of fusion, we have to um, worry about the number of moles of that heat of fusion. Um, and so for our plot that I did above, I held it to one mole, so it's just one times that molar heat of fusion. But in any problem that we do, we're going to have to account for how many moles are present. So mass, if we're given mass, we're going to have to convert to moles in order to get a molar heat of fusion. However, sometimes heat of fusion is given in, in terms of mass. And so you just have to be careful of the units as you are um, doing these problems. We'll do one here in a second. Then MC delta T of the liquid, um, as we see next. 
Again, different values for C and delta T. Molar heat of vaporization comes next when we vaporize. We have to add that in to keep track of our total heat here. And then finally, we've got to heat the gas um, phase as well, MC delta T. So all of those added together, if we were going from a solid at a lower than the uh, melting point temperature, and again, just to remind you, the temperature here where these phase changes occur, Okay, so we've got the boiling point, or the freezing point, excuse me, and we've got the boiling point at the higher temperature um, where all the energy is going toward breaking the intermolecular forces and not towards um, causing an increase in temperature. Okay, so we add all those together. Now, I think I may have cut off that side here, so let's look. Yeah, there's the, there's the full equation right there, so now you can see the full thing. Before we move on to the problems, let's look at, again, the heat of sublimation is not just the heat of fusion plus the heat of vaporization, because if we see to go from a solid here all the way to the gas phase, we not only have to add together the heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization, but we also have a term for heating the liquid, the, mole, the MC delta T of the liquid as well. So. Uh, the chart on the left was a little bit deceptive in that term, but to see this truly is the value of the molar heat of sublimation to go from the solid phase directly to the gas. We've got to uh, break apart, we've got to melt, we've got to heat the liquid, we've got to vaporize the liquid all at one time in order to get that to occur. And now let's do some problems. So if we have the enthalpy of, of vaporization of methanol is a certain value and there's a certain amount of methanol condensed at the normal boiling point, what is the enthalpy change? So we're not changing temperature, we're just looking at um, the phase change that's occurring here. So we're condensing and so we're not really using the heat of vaporization, we're using the heat of condensation which is going to be less than zero, so it's the opposite value of moles, not milliliters there, it's the opposite value of the heat of vaporization. Okay, so we're losing energy, we're losing enthalpy going from a gas to a liquid or condensing, so knowing those terms is important. And so what we typically do is we start with a given piece of information here, the 45 0.8 grams of methanol and anytime we're given a unit we want to get rid of it because we're going toward um, we want the enthalpy change which is a unit of energy not grams we want to get rid of that so what relates everything is moles of methanol here one mole to grams that's the molar mass so from the periodic table we have a 32.04 grams per mole um, and now we're in terms of mole then we say okay what do i want now well i want to be able to find out how much heat we have well look what i have i've got negative 35 the enthalpy change negative 35 kilojoules per mole of methanol and so that cancels and i end up with a unit of energy the final value there to three significant figures negative 50.6 kilojoules of enthalpy change occurs when that condensation happens. Okay, so we're just, again, keeping track of our units and then canceling appropriately. 